vinyls. <sighs> the lost art form, the hipster's paradise, the best way to listen to music. Even though it's actually digital music because it's the most superior way that it's actually pressed and you actually get a louder sound of it, I'm not even lying. However, they look hella neat and you can apparently hear extra instruments off them compared to the digital stuff. But the reason you can't listen to those extra instruments is because you're listening to music out from your phone or iPad. Or some really crappy AirPods. I hate AirPods, but that's just saying something. If you have a high quality system speaker and you plug your device into that with the digital music, you will hear all those things that you get on the vinyl for much cheaper. It's just the speaker that does it. It's the sound itself that you need to amplify that gets the better thing. Vinyls though just look hella cool and I'm just, I will say that and I won't lie to myself despite the fact that I have sunk thousands of dollars into this collection. Something I get asked quite, quite, quite often is where do you buy these things and how do you get it? Oh wow, starting a vinyl collection is really cool. I should do it as well. And despite the fact that I do tell people, you know, it's easy to get, it's easy to start, it's very simple, just know what you want, write down a list. I still get the same, same questions about what to do. Where did you do? How do you do this? Why should I do this? The thing is, there's no real reason why you should do it. In fact, I realize now that it's actually quite stupid. It is an inferior way of listening to music. It just looks hella nice. It's vintage. And it does, you know, really help your own taste. But you can also do the same thing with CDs. It's just, you know, they're not as cool as having a giant disc. So, I will be breaking down what you should do when you collect your vinyls. You're catching that breeze till you're dead in the grave. But you're keeping it so real. First things first. I'm the realist. Secondly, you have to decide what kind of vinyl collector you are. I'm going to generalize it to about three types of people. Those three are collects to listen to, collects to have in their possession, and collects to increase stock on them. The first type is very simple, you know, you just buy vinyls of albums you happen to like, and you, you know, do the thing that you do with all music. You listen to it over and over again. One thing I do like about vinyls is it does kind of, not really force you, but it incentivizes you to go over an entire album track by track by track without skipping. I think that's good, you find a lot of tracks that you didn't realize how much you liked. And the thing that I do like about it, it removes the whole skipping through and going through a part of a song to find out whether you're gonna like it or not because you're you're in this, you're committed to this. You're gonna to listen to this album, even if it sucks. I, I'd recommend buying an album, you know, 50% of the songs. That's all I'll say. My second type is just people who, you know, collect the vinyls for the sake of them, you know, just because they look nice, an aesthetic thing. If you do this, you will not need a vinyl record player, you'll just need a place to store them for they look nice and you just don't open them at all. And the last person who I will just sum up right now, people who collect and s for stock reasons. If you're gonna have like, you know, a first print of Stanconia back here, that is very valuable. If you want like a, if you find that something that you like now is gonna be a classic in the future, it is like, for example, if you, if you bought an early press of Two Pimper Butterfly, that's a special edition one, you keep that, you vacuum lock it, and you make sure that bad boy is safe and away from the peoples. Or if it's like limited edition stuff. Or you just happen to have a bunch of vintage vinyls from like, you know, the past times. Like uh, first pressing of Rumours or Black Sabbath debut. That aside, I will now break down what you should do. Vinyl sleeves. Now, because you will be opening these vinyls, you'll be tearing off the protective plastic you're gonna need some vinyl sleeves. You can find them on eBay, Amazon, or if you're at Discrepancy Records, which is a place I use constantly, you get them off that. And it's just, you know, very simple. You put, you place it in there. It, your record is still very visible. However, it just keeps it nice and safe and free from dust and damage. You know, the airs of time, essentially. This is good for all of them. They're completely wrapped and in the plastic. You may not need it. But if you are cautious and you really want to take that extra step because you feel the plastic may fade, get some sleeves. They will protect them. All right, now everything has gone past. Let's just um, let's show where you get your vinyls. We are all currently in a pandemic right now, so online shopping would be king for this, which is great because there are many, many places you can buy vinyls online. I would rank them 
And you know what? I am going to rank them. Best places to buy vinyls. Let's get going. Amazon is first, is because the delivery is very fast. They are all factory outletted, and you will get them all at once unless it is not available in your country, in which case it will ship about maybe two, three weeks later. But generally, it's very good. It will always be on the two-week mark, and some things even just a week and a half. And even with the travel delays, I'd say it is still an extremely efficient way to get your vinyls from Amazon. They have such a wide variety of them. They have the special editions, just regular vinyls, and there are constantly sales on them, so you can get them cheap as hell. I got to Pimp a Butterfly for $20 on vinyl, the 2LP vinyl. Very good, very mint. I got Kids Seagulls for $19. The only downside I would say to Amazon is the times where it does sell out in your country and it's outside that you'll have to pay about $15 for delivery, which is really gross. But luckily, because I wanted to watch The Boys on Amazon Prime, I have Amazon Prime for the next month, the free trial. And I will definitely remember to cancel it. Second best place, JB Hi-Fi. Yes, they are pretty good. They are very nice for them. I'd say there is a large enough stock online, and you can even go to the shops to buy some, and there's even some unlisted stuff that's in the shops, which I would recommend you checking out. People at the stores are very nice. I generally like them a lot, and they've even asked if I wanted vinyls ordered in to the JB Hi-Fi specifically. And I have actually done that a few times, and they've been gracious enough to do so. Because of them, I got Rex Orange County's Pony. I love JB Hi-Fi. It's just Amazon price-wise is a lot cheaper and JB did, tends not to have many sales. Delivery time though is very good and they take care of the packages very nicely. eBay here, and I'm very hesitant to put it in the third place. However, there's one thing I like about eBay. It can be so goddamn cheap. Tame Empire was Currents and The Slow Rush both for $30 when in JB Hi-Fi they are going for $50 each. And that's $20 saved and I got free delivery on both of them. So there is a bit of hassle because you have to wait because eBay's shipping is a bit more unpredictable compared to everything else. There are times where they can forget the tracking notice and it could take about a month, but it will always be a month, no longer than that for them to come. One thing I do like about eBay is a lot of the records you can find will be stuff that places like Amazon and regular stores don't sell anymore. For example, Acid Rap is constantly up there. You always find someone trying to sell that. Saba's Care For Me is up there, which is at an extremely unreasonable price. Daniel Caesar's Freudian I found on there. And I found a lot of clip stuff before someone bought them all out and I couldn't get them anymore. I failed Pusha T. I'm sorry, buddy. But yeah, I'd say that is one of the main positives of eBay's cheapness. However, it's not consistently cheaper and delivery isn't as hasty as something like Amazon. However, I have picked up very, very rare stuff off eBay, so for that I do give it a lot of credit. I have Frank Ocean's Endless album, The Legit Thing. I sniped that for 420 man, when compared to its actual value at 600 to $800. Check out eBay third after Amazon and JB Hyper. If range is not wide enough there, those are the stores to check out. Discrepancy records. The range here is amazing and they are constantly restocking and reshipping and the customer service is wonderful. Shipping is no more than a week that from what I've done in Australia and they do ship promptly. The moment you order it, they will go to the post office. They're almost waiting at the post office with it and even if it is shut, they will jam their hand in, break into the post office and put the package in for you because they want it to be with you as soon as possible. One thing I also do like about Discrepancy Records, they give you a vinyl sleeve with every vinyl you do buy and purchase. Which does save you a tiny bit on the amount of vinyl uh, sleeves you do have to buy. It's not that much, but it's still, if, if you're having a large collection like I do, I spent a shite ton. It's just really convenient for that. So it just, it cuts the middleman out for there. The only issue, if something sells out, it does take a while to restock. Could be about one to two months away. And then by that time, you've already bought it on another website, which is really annoying, because then now it's readily available. Mac Pinnell is the divine feminine. But if you do get something, it will be pretty good. It can be a bit pricey than other things, but it can actually sometimes be cheaper. For example, the weekend's um, Beauty Behind the Madness, I got it for $62 there, compared to what Amazon was selling it for, like, 70 And God, it was so nice. It came in nice, the vinyl sleeve and everything like that. Just a beautiful record that I would recommend everyone listen to. Discogs. Now, the thing with Discogs is you have to use PayPal. That's my only issue with it. That and um, it is sometimes 
unofficial vinyl pressings of many albums. However, they do have a very, very large selection of ranges from stuff in Europe that you won't find anywhere else. So for that, I really do have to give it credit because I did get a called a The Lost Boy pressing from it. Also got Injury Reserve self-titled album. I would recommend it because it's just like eBay. It's got that rarity thing. It's just, it takes a bit longer, about a month, I'd say. And you're just negotiating between a third party because Discog is basically a person holding the meeting you're going to buy it there and then they send it to the actual person selling the vinyl and then they renegotiate it with them and then they send the delivery price which then gets sent to you and then you say okay i'm willing to pay that for delivery and then they say they're willing to pay that and then it's beautiful and then it's shipped through them and then back to you but generally good service that is all i have to say about the matter of vinyls they are beautiful the covers are glorious and you can put them on your wall and please make sure you do not cheap out on the wall schemas because they will start falling off and you're definitely not down for like me. Thank you. Thank you very much.